Greetings everyone and welcome to the Platypus Knitting channel. My name is Bobby Olan and this is episode 38 of Bobalog. I am a knitter and multi-crafty maker coming to you from Victoria, Australia and I would first of all like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I live and create, the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people and I would like to acknowledge them and pay my respects to their elders past, present and future. Uh, next up I will start the housekeeping. <laughs> Uh, so what do I say in housekeeping? Um, you can also find me on Ravelry under my own name, Bobby Ola, and I am on Instagram uh, at Platypus Knitting. So I hope to see or hear from uh, any of you on either of those platforms as well. You can also find links to anything that I discuss in this episode down in the YouTube description below. I feel like there is something <sighs> there's something that I'm forgetting to say but oh well um, <laughs> it is gonna annoy me but no moving on let's move on and let's just get started um, I am going to start off this episode um, by going through handy dandy which is my segment um, on talking about my current knitting projects so the first one that I want to mention um, I guess it's technically not current because I have finished it it is the teddy bear illusion blanket designed by Steve Plummer and uh, I have shown this to you in my last few episodes so if you are a returning viewer you've probably seen all of those before and thank you for coming back and joining me again. So that blanket is done and I'm really 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 happy with how it turned out. It is currently blocking so I don't have it here to show you but um, I did take some photos of it pre and post blocking. So the first images here um, show the blanket just laid out pre blocking and you can see that from the front on view that you can make out, you can still make out the bear, uh, but when you look at the blanket from an angle, it is much more obvious, which is the effect of illusion knitting or shadow knitting. Um, and I have to admit that I was a little disappointed by how much you could see the bear from the front on view because I was hoping it would be completely invisible. And then I blocked it and now you'll be able to see that now from the, um, the front on view that it really does just look like stripes. There are maybe, you can maybe make out hints that something else is going on but you really cannot see the bear. Um, nowhere near as much as you could see it before it was blocked. The thing is um, that then when you look at it on an angle you do have to be on a bit more of an angle to really see the best image of the bear which is totally fine and of course um, once it has fully dried and I have taken it off the blocking mats and it's not being stretched anymore then perhaps um, it'll settle into somewhere in between um, the pre-blocking and the post-blocking states. So yeah, I, I'm really happy with how it's turned out and I'm really happy with how it's looking. I did weave in all of the ends before I blocked it and while you can sort of see where they are, they weren't as obvious as I was afraid that they would be on the back, especially where I had ends like right in the middle of the blanket. I'm sure that my friend who I am gifting this to won't even notice. Um, yeah, so what else did I want to say about that? The border. So I was, I think I was almost up to the border, just about up to the border when I spoke to you last about a month ago. Um, and I told you my plans for it. Uh, 
and I did change those plans slightly so I had originally intended the border to be striped and then I went through Ravelry and looked at other people's projects and there were only like less than a handful of people who had put stripes in the border and while I still thought that they looked good um, they generally I'm pretty sure had thicker stripes than what I had been intending to do and it sort of helped me realize that because the blankets itself is pretty much in stripes the borders at the top and bottom would look more like a continuation of that rather than something that is framing it the um, the border on running down the sides because the stripes would be going perpendicular to the stripes of the blanket itself they still would have felt like a border but because the top and top and bottom borders um, wouldn't have felt like it was framing it I decided not to do that in the end so I went with just a one color garter stitch border the which is what the pattern recommends I did do it in the round so I there was a lot of purling involved and the pattern does suggest um, knitting each side on its own in garter stitch so that you're only ever knitting and then seaming those little corners together but I, I didn't want to do that and I explained last time that I wanted to try this slip stitch sort of detail right in the corners and I did that and I'm really happy with how it looks it just adds that little bit more interest to the border I feel and because uh, the slitches, slitches? <laughs> ah, because the stitches are being slipped three rows um, at a time they are pulling in the corner a bit so it is more rounded like a rounded corner rather than a point but I'm totally fine with that I knew that was going to be a thing and then um, when I had knit about five centimeters of garter stitch I did one row in the darker color and then I did the I-cord bind off so actually that just makes me think of a cup one more thing that I wanted to mention with the with like this whole blanket I used let's see let's see how much I used one two three four five six seven eight maybe eight about eight and a half something like that balls of yarn in total and only one of the balls had a knot in it so I was pretty pleased with that um, and for the light colored yarn which is the colorway jute in the fiddlesticks finch 100% cotton yarn that I use um, I do have half a ball left of the very last ball and um, I don't have any extra balls of that left for the blue yarn I actually have pretty much three balls left when I was doing the I-cord bind off I got I did one two maybe just into the third side and I ran out of yarn um, so I did have to break into another ball which I was hoping to not have to do but um, it didn't use that much of it so the balls are meant to be 71 grams of yarn but they were really generous and all of them had over that amount so when I had to break into the last ball I weighed the three balls that I had left and I used the one that had the most so this one had actually about 79 to 80 grams of it and then when I was finished with the blanket I weighed it again and it is um, 65 grams so it's actually still technically al almost a full ball even though I used about 15 grams of it give or take it's only like six grams less than what the original ball was and then you know if you combine if you if you group those three balls together two of them are um, 
over the 71 grams that the ball should be and one is just a little bit under. So in my mind, I still have three full balls worth of that yarn left. <sighs> That's a lot of explaining just to tell you that I have three balls of yarn <laughs> left. <laughs> anyway, um, so this was the first I-cord bind off that I have done and I am really, really happy with how it turned out. I actually really enjoyed the process. I used um, a crochet hook to, to do it, which actually, I mean, I started off using the needles that the knitting needles that I'd used to make the whole blanket. But then I thought this 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 could be easier with a crochet hook. So I pulled out my Leica um, crochet hook, which was which is the same size as the knitting needles that I was using, and that's what I used <laughs> to do the I cord bind off. And it just made it so much quicker and easier and more enjoyable for me. So yeah, that took oh, where am I? I'm going to give you some stats on that. I thought I had them memorized, but then I completely forgot. So let's see, Bear Illusion Blanket. So it took, um, I have these notes on my Ravelry project um, for this as well, but the blanket took just over 50 hours in total. And does that include yeah, that, that includes like, you know, all of my tinking and re that I had to do, which wasn't actually all that much on this blanket considering, but yeah, just over 50 hours. In total, that includes um, all the way up to weaving in all of the ends. Doesn't include any of the blocking because how do you time that? Anyway, um, the iPod bind off took, sorry, just bear with me, one, two, three, four, maybe five hours? Yeah, <laughs> maybe five hours. I have, I did like actually calculate this properly and put it in my project notes on Ravelry if anyone is interested in looking at that. So, Yes, just over 50 hours for the whole blanket. Around five hours of that was the I-cord bind up. So it took a really long time, but like I said, I really enjoyed doing it and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. And I hope that you like seeing it too. And I really hope that my friend absolutely loves it. Now, I don't, I don't know if I had mentioned this before, but one of the reasons that, um, I really wanted to give this friend in particular an illusion knit type blanket for her second baby is because when we were in high school, um, there was a period where um, we, we like every lunchtime, we were getting the book, um, oh my gosh, what's it called now? The 11th Hour, The 11th Hour by Graham Bass, and we were pouring over each page um, looking for all of the clues we could find in that book. I'm actually just going to grab it now and show it to you just in case you're not familiar with it. Give me one sec. So this is the book here, The Eleventh Hour by Graham Face, and it's sort of a mystery-ish book. Every single page, like these illustrations are just beautiful and amazing, but what makes it even more just absolutely brilliant is that each page has clues in it so it tells a story and then at the end of the story um, I think the from memory like the feast it, it's about a birthday party and the feast is missing or something and so you have to go back through the book and try to solve all of the hidden clues throughout the book um, to solve the mystery so we poured over every single page we spent lots of hours, lot, having lots of fun going through looking for all of the clues that we could. And we only missed maybe like two or three, I'm pretty sure. But one of the ones we missed, um, let me see if I can find the page. I don't know if I will, if it will actually come up on camera when I try to show you um, the clue. la di da di da where is it? Is it actually at the front? It was on the page. 
that I had thought that I had randomly opened to amazingly, but I can't even, I can't even read it. I can't, oh there, you have to have your nose like right on the page and you can just, you are, you are totally not going to be able to see this. If you can get to a library and borrow this book, or just like flip through it at the library, try, because the, the, the darker bits on the curtains and then the lines that form the folds of the curtains, when you have your nose like right up against the bottom of the book and you're, you're looking at those black marks, you can read a hidden clue there, which is, which is just mind blowing and just incredible and amazing. Um, yes. So anyway, um, I always remember that clue. I always remember this time, um, with fondness and, um, because like illusion knitting always makes me think of how that clue works as well, because from the front, just looking at it normally, you can't see it, but when you look at it from an angle, a really, really extreme angle, um, then you can see it <laughs> there. So I am just going to make a quick note that I have now mentioned that book and need to um, put it in the show notes for you. 11th hour. Yeah. It's such, it's such a brilliant, it's such a brilliant book. Anyway, all right. Moving on from that, was that everything that I wanted to say about it? More than even <laughs> than I wanted to say about it. Yes, okay, let's move on to the second handy dandy because I spent way too much time talking about that. So the second handy dandy is the one that I'm actually wearing. So this is Mina's Tuxedo Vest by Wendy Bernard from the book Custom Knits, which I have shown before. Um, I'm, pre I'm almost finished with it, pretty much almost finished with it. It hasn't been blocked or anything. Right now, I'm going to stand up so you can see. Right now, I am I actually just have a, um, this is an old hair stick thing, um, but I just have it through the, I don't know if this is really um, dark yarn, so I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I just did the crab stitch um button loop edging thing that the pattern recommends then I did a little modification is on the other um, side I just knitted a tiny little flap out of whatever yarn I had left without breaking into a new ball I just knit the tiniest um, little flap so that when I have the buttons in and um, it's closed if it wants to gape at all you're not going to see anything like any gappiness in there like that so the buttons will be where they should be and then if it gapes you'll only just be seeing this tiny little flap um, that's there so yeah so that's pretty much all that's left to do that and weaving in all of the ends and then blocking it the thing is I mean okay so just because I mentioned blocking you probably noticed that this one, this side of the collar, more than this side, it keeps wanting to, to do that instead of laying open like it should. But um, let me just get my stick back in so that it's a bit easier for me to talk to you. Um, yeah, so I do think that this issue will be helped with blocking. But I do have to say that, um, so one thing, one other issue I'm having is that I do sometimes or quite often feel like um, the color is like pulling my neck forward. And then the other thing as well is, um, I'm just gonna move my noisy chair so I can try to show you this better. So let's see if you can see. Um, around if I show you the back or if I show you an angle you can see that there is still a bit of fabric bunching um, just there around the armhole and I mean that's no surprise at all because I picked up 
at a different rate than what the pattern recommended to try to um, fix up um, even more like fabric gathering and bunching that was happening around the back. So on my back, it is like lying a lot better. It is like flatter and lying a lot better than it had been before I did that. You can see it from this um, this side as well that there's still some gathering. So I do hope that blocking will help with that but also I have found like sometimes because because I get a bit of bubbling down here as well so the yarn is so dark I'm sure it's really hard to see but there I've kind of emphasized it a bit you can see how the fabric is bunching down there um, and of course I can just pull it down to fix it you can still see some folds um, there but if I just pull up the collar a bit and fold it over more um, I don't know maybe it's not helping anyway um, I'm gonna I'll sit back down and keep talking at you. So what I'm trying to get at there is just that I was I was actually when did I finish this? I finished this a couple of weeks ago um, and then I put it to the side because I was actually intending on undoing this whole collar um, and redoing it for a third time because I have already re-knit the whole thing once before. Um, and I was thinking of redoing it and adding some increases at like just up here um, so that A, it isn't, there's more fabric and it isn't pulling my neck forward as much and then B, so that hopefully um, it, it just sits it just sits better um, and I don't need to keep pulling it up and maybe that will help with the back as well but actually now that okay don't, I'm jumping around I didn't do that straight away even though I was tempted to because I wanted to be able to show this to all of you um, before I did that and show you where it's at and now I'm really glad that I didn't go ahead and just frog this whole color immediately because I feel like it's sitting better than I remembered when I had tried it on um, when I had initially like first finished doing the last little bits to it it's I also feel like it isn't pulling on my neck as I remember feeling like it was a couple of weeks ago so I might actually just block it um, and see if that does improve it at all if it is like sitting better behaving better feeling better after blocking um, and if it is well then thank you to all of you um, because I waited to show this to you before ripping it out then that saves me a few hours of you know ripping out and redoing this whole color so hopefully next time I do um, another episode that will be the last I will be talking about working on this vest and it will be done um, the last thing I think that I want to mention is just that I have decided to go with these lovely moon buttons Yes, so they'll be like there somewhere. There won't be a stick, obviously. And yeah, I mean, other than those few little things, I am pretty happy with how this has turned out. Um, like there are a few other fit issues, like there's some bunching under the armholes here for me. Um, the, the waist at the back is sitting lower than it should um, which is why I'm getting some bunching there and then the waist at the front is sitting a bit higher than I would have liked I probably would have liked it to be like I mean I guess it kind of is at my waist but I feel like I would have liked it to be just a little bit lower so 
you know, I, I just need to figure out um, my body, <laughs> my body shape, um, all of its little quirks um, and how best to adjust knits to fit better. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, that was a nice quick one. Um, since I have finished the Illusion Blanket and pretty much finished this, um, I did finally get back to working on another project which I had not touched since July last year. So that is Haskins by Veronique Avery. And this is it here. This is a um, jumper that I am making for my partner and I'm hoping to have it done by his birthday in a couple of months. Fingers crossed. Um, but that, that, ooh, that is where I'm up to now. So it has a few funny like folds and things. The most obvious is this, this line just here. And I thought initially that that was where I had left it um like that was where I was up to and then I didn't touch it for months and months and for some reason that created a fold and that may still be the case but this um this cable needle here is actually showing where I had gotten up to when I last put it down and that is actually a few rows above where that fold is um so I mean that it <laughs> That could still be a reason why the fold is there. Uh, I'm not too worried about it because I'm pretty sure that once I block it, it um, will sort itself out. But I currently have it on keeper cords because I am planning to block it now where it is and just um, check my gauge and everything. I the 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 pattern the pattern gauge has um it it has the row gauge for the stockinette portion and for this um detailed <laughs> section here for this stitch pattern here um the row gauge is the same but unblocked for me they are actually different i think i'm getting 31 rows to 10 centimeters in stockinette stitch and something like you know i can actually just tell you I am getting, yep, so 31 rows in stockinette stitch and 29 rows in this pattern here. And I am almost at the point where um, I need to start doing armhole decreases, but I wanted to just make really sure of my gauge before I do that. So because of um, my row gauge difference, this section here is almost at the point um, where I need to start doing the armhole decreases, but this section, the, the sides are actually a couple of centimeters shorter than that because my row gauge is so different. So I'm going to block it and see what it does and um, hopefully they will get closer <laughs> um, to matching and um, I'll I'll measure it again then and just figure out whether yeah I'll, I'll measure it again then and from then I should know how much more I need to knit or if I can just start doing those armhole decreases but I'm so happy to be getting back to this after spending so much time working on that blanket in that 100% cotton yarn. It feels so nice to be going back to wool. So this one is knit in the Bendigo Woolen Mills Classic 8-ply. I absolutely love the colour. Um, um, I'm a bit sad that it's not mine, <laughs> but I'll get to see it on my partner, so that will be lovely too. But it's such a beautiful green. Um, I'm afraid I don't think I have kept any tags at the moment of what the exact colorway is, but um, I'm sure I've mentioned it in the past, and I'm sure I'll mention it in the future. So that is the Haskins sweater. Haskins. I'm loving it.
I yeah, I'm just I'm really excited to be working on it again. I'm really enjoying the process. So after I finish um, filming today, at some point today, I I mean. Yeah, I will block it. I will take off um, these stitch markers and um, yes, I'll take off these stitch markers before I block it. But I wanted to show them to you because um, I love the set. So these were part of Eleventy-One Windmills's advent of I believe twenty twenty-two, which was Creatures of Myth and Folk. Lore, I believe. So this set here is the um, werewolf set. Um, yeah, I love them. And since I have mentioned it, I hadn't actually put this in my notes, but this was my last handy dandy to show you. And since I have mentioned the 11T1's windmill advent, I thought maybe I will go off on a little craft for thought tangent here. <laughs> so um, Advents have, uh, knitting advents, yarn advents have been um, being announced and released for maybe the last, last month or so and I have never gotten a yarny advent before. Um, I, I don't know, I've just never seen one that I really felt like I absolutely had to have. They are all beautiful um, but I just never felt the need to get one before. Um, so the only one, the only like related advent that I've really felt like I really, really, really want to have that, I must have it, is that Eleven T One Windmills um, Notions advent from a couple of years ago. So yes, I've been seeing on um, social media and on the Aussie Discord, Aussie Knitting Knitters, Discord, um, you know, people have been talking about the advents that will um, that are mostly currently on pre-order at the moment for the end of this year. And again, I was looking at them. There were a few that I was tempted by, but I just I never um, felt the calling enough to you know to actually just go through and pre-order them. And then, and then a couple of days ago, um, Lisa of Eleven T One Windmills posted her um, theme for the advent that she's going to be doing this year. And for one thing, I really loved the theme. I thought it was, it was really interesting. It's um, something like a mini magical terrarium or something. She's created this lovely image of like a fairyland terrarium um, with a little hobbit door in it. Um, I'm a huge fan of <laughs> Lord of the Rings um, so that that little hobbit door was immediately like oh this is going to be like really fantastic. I don't know that it's going to have anything Lord of the Rings -y in it. It's just a round door um, but you know. Anyway I was really intrigued by that but I still wasn't like I must have this. Um, it's probably my favorite thing that I have seen so far this year, but I was still like, ah, I don't need it. I can live without it. I'm still not going to get an advent this year. And then I read what she was actually doing. And I think I'm changing my mind. I'm pretty sure I'm changing my mind. So it hasn't been released yet. She hasn't announced when um, pre-orders are going to open up, but I am going to be on that. Um, so it is going to be, she's, she has a few options. So option one is 12 days of notions. Option two is 12 days of yarn, uh, of yarn minis. And then option three is, um, is getting both of those so that you have 24 days, which is um, a full advent. And while I was definitely intrigued by the notions, it was the yarn set that really made me go, yes, okay, I have to have this. I like, this is mine. This is just going to be mine. I, I have no choice. I don't have a choice anymore. Lisa, why do you do this to me? And also, thank you for doing this to me. <laughs> um, basically, um, this is something that I personally haven't seen in any other advent anywhere. Instead of coming up with her own um, colorways or I mean she probably 
uh, let me just explain. Instead of dyeing her own yarn, is what I should say, she is collaborating with a whole host of, well, a whole host, a dozen uh, independent yarn yarn dyers, um, and each of those are go each of them are going to provide um, a mini. And I just think that is just such a brilliant idea. I love the idea that um, each of your little mini skeins is going to come from a different independent, a different indie yarn dyer. And I think it's just brilliant. I cannot wait. And now I am going to be getting the full advent um, as soon as it as soon as the pre-order goes live. So that is my little mini tangent on advents that I had not planned to do, but there you have it. Thank you, Lisa. You're brilliant. Your designs are brilliant. You're just brilliant. Thank you, and I cannot wait. So what is next that is actually on my list? Multicrafty. Let's Let's try to get through multi-crafty. How long have I been talking? Quite a while. Uh, let's go. Okay, so just the first quick one is last episode, I went on and on about how I had just discovered um, some magic crochet techniques you could do with self-striping yarn that could do these really cool color pulling things and I showed you the start that I had made um, just with some acrylic <clears throat> self-striping yarn that I had that I thought could work for it. So I did finish that sample. I completely overestimated how much yarn I had um, or how far it would go and it made a much narrower sample than I had thought it would. And I even had to find all the little scraps all over my craft room that I could of um, other colorways in the same yarn, which was the Four Seasons Marvel Magic Stripe, which is now discontinued. Um, I think when I had bought this yarn originally. I had bought one of every single color and I'd used them for various things and I just had scrappy bits left. Um, so yes, anyway, I I had to start using my little scrappy bits of other colorways just to try to eke out like another row or two. So this is, here is a photo of um, how I had finished it the first time. You can sort of get a sense of um, how the colors are moving, but they didn't get to do any crossing over to create the plaid design that I was hoping to achieve. Um, I decided that um, I would frog it and start again and start from like a start with, start from a slightly different spot to where I had started previously so that the um, longest color section which is the speckled section um, that would be in the center instead of on the sides for some reason I just thought that I would see the effect better um, if I had that in the center and I had the solid colors on the side so I completely ripped it out and started it again and um, this is what I have now. Um, and while it is still no wider than it originally was because I had no more yarn than I did um, in the first place, I do I do like it better. I do like how you can see it better. So you can see how um, like this, center blue color the leaning away towards each other um, the thing that I wish that you could see more is how this lime green color on the edge it is leaning it is moving outwards but there is also like just a little bit of it moving inwards and if I had more of more yarn you would see more of this little bit here where the um lime green color and the I don't know sort of minty green color would cross over and start doing that plaid but oh well I just wanted to experiment and play with it and it, it was really fun to do there was a lot of frogging but that was okay um, 
yeah, that was that was lots of fun. And I do I would like to make a something <laughs> like a proper something out of like this technique at some point. But right now, now that I've done this and tried it out, it's pretty low on my priorities. <sighs> yes. Okay. So that's that one. Well, let's move on to the next one, which is spinning. So I have mentioned quite a few times that I am working through spinning um, a whole bunch of roving that I had bought from Alibaba to make a chunky blanket. And um, this is going to be really hard to pick up, actually. I'll, I'll do it one by one instead of trying to show you all of the separate bits and pieces. So um, with the first bobbin that I spun um, up, I every time I broke off a chunk of roving, I weighed it and was making notes of it. And I got about 300 grams. Um, you know what, I will try to just show you everything. Um, but I'll explain. <laughs> I'll finish explaining first. Um, I got about 300 grams of the roving onto that. So for the second and third singles that I spun, I pre-measured out like 300 grams and I spun each of those onto um, a bobbin. So the second bobbin is completely fine. I got the 300 grams onto it. It was a really full bobbin, um, which I'm pretty sure I've shown before. And then the third one, the third one is um, I had explained previously how within that 300 grams of fiber I had also thrown in um, some slightly felted um, chunks of the same fiber that I had tried natural dyeing um, and for some reason that bobbin filled up a lot quicker so I actually had to do the last little bit of it onto a fourth bobbin um, to use up all of the 300 grams worth of fiber that I had weighed out. So that's the fourth bobbin of the single there. And then um, I started plying and I have plied two very full bobbins worth. So this is the first one. It is not perfect it is more consistent than i had expected which is always a really happy thing to find and i i'm i'm actually happier with it than i had thought i would be because uh this fiber is a sort of questionable quality and i wasn't really aiming for consistency when I was spinning the singles I was just trying to see how fine I could go um I yeah I I was really was not expecting much from this yarn so while it is still far from an amazing yarn in my opinion I'm still really happy with it plus those little pops of color um that I put in it I think have actually um like made have ha have helped it become a much nicer yarn than it could have been if it was just the solid gray that I had started off with. So if I could show you there, hopefully that is um, coming up and focusing nicely. But I feel like because just one of the singles has um, color through it and not all the way through it, just mixed in amongst it, it's sort of almost giving like a, um, a little bit of a tweedy effect, which I love. And it's just that little bit of interest. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I am, I have been aiming to go for a, an over plied, <clears throat> uh, an over plied three ply yarn. And I do think for my next spinning project, I will aim for it to be e uh, even more over plied than this is. This is, fine um it's like it's it's perfectly well plied <laughs> it's perfectly usable um there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with how I've plied it but I just feel like um I'd be happier with it if it was if it was plied more <laughs> so at the moment I'm getting about three to four um twists per inch in its pre-finished state 
um, and then I'll measure everything again after I have washed and snapped it and then and then yeah so so even though I'm saying I would like something that is more over applied than this currently is I don't want to um, change how I'm spinning the rest of it because I I, pr I probably will try to find a project that I can you know use up as much of this as I can um, and so it wouldn't make sense to have a couple of skeins um, plied more loosely than the rest of it. So this is the second bobbin that I have plied. Again pretty happy with how it's looking. Um, this is actually um, well, I haven't weighed this one, but this one is just under 200 grams. It is, um, so I, I put it on my, my, one of my nitty noddies, and then I counted how many um, times I, you know, wrapped it around, and it was over 200 times. It took a really long time to get onto the nitty noddy, and my arm was pretty tired from that, but um yeah so quite quite a lot of yarn on that one and it is um I calculated the grist and it is currently um sitting at a heavy sport slash light DK yarn which I'm, I'm really pleased about and of course I'll recalculate the the grist once I have finished it um, and I won't do that until I've plied all of the yarn so that I can do it all at once and the other interesting thing that I have found is just how um, how differently or how how do I say this how did I say it in my notes so interesting to see the difference in how much yarn is being used up from each bobbin. So now let me show this to you. Ta-da! So the this one on the purple bobbin here, that was my first bobbin. And you can see that it still has so much yarn on it. Like it's still really quite full. And my other two bobbins are a lot less full. So this purple one in the middle here was my second uh, single. And then this one on the end is my third single. And that has the least on it. But I do have that fourth bobbin of um, the same yarn. I might actually, when I spin the... Um, when I when I apply the a, a third bobbin full, I might actually use this one instead of instead of the the one on the white bobbin, just so that I can free up another bobbin for me. So this was on, but basically when I bought this spinning wheel, this um. EEW6 from Dreaming Robots, I had six bobbins. So right now, um, four of them have singles on them, which gave me two for plying. So I plied this, and then I plied the last bobbin. And then after um, a few days, I took this one off so that I would have another bobbin to ply onto but if I can free up a third bobbin for plying um, then that will just be very handy. So that is my plan. Um, I'm not sure how many more bobbins I, I will actually be able to um, get out of this, maybe even just two. I'm thinking probably three. Who knows though? Who knows? We'll see. Um, so that's been really fun. Is there anything else that I wanted to say. Said that, said that, said that, said that. Yes, so that is it for Multicrafty. Oh, goodness. 
Um, I am back to just rambling on and on and giving you really long episodes, which I hope you are enjoying because I am not done yet. Um, eye candy. So this will just be really quick because, uh, well, let's just hope it's really quick. It's meant to be really quick. Um, so as I mentioned, as I have mentioned before, I am um, on... I am part of the Aussie Knitters Discord server and there is um, a channel in there that is D stash and trades, which I love looking at, but I've never been inspired to get anything before. But then um, Patricia was doing a D stash of a whole lot of um, books and magazines. And so I put my hand up and I got a few. So I got these from her. Eh, eh. <laughs> I'm being dramatic. So I got these two liner magazines um, and they are summer and autumn of 2022. I'm not going to go through um, any of these because, I mean, if you want to see the patterns that are in them, you could easily find that online. But also there are just so many in all of these that I really like. Um, so there's no point taking you through all of those because that will be a lot. But I did just want to mention um, that I really love how, like these little illustrations that they have um, with the patterns. I think they're, they're really pretty and it's just a, a nice way of um, presenting it instead of just having photographs all the time. And of course, photographs are beautiful. They're showing you what the um, item actually looks like and how it fits and how it falls and all of that kind of thing. But I, I, I love a good illustration, so I really enjoy that. And the books are actually by Lina as well. So they have those two, which has been really lovely. And the books are 52 Weeks of Socks and 52 weeks of scarves and again um there are so many more patterns in these that I liked there are so many more patterns than I expected to like I I like so many more patterns than I had thought I would I knew that there would be patterns in them that I liked but for this one especially because I'm not a big scarf and shawl knitter um, I, I thought that this would just be a really nice one to have on the shelf and I'd like maybe one or two but I like quite a lot more than that so I may I may become a shawl knitter I don't know we shall see um, thank you Patricia I'm so so happy with these I feel so lucky um, that you were so generously um, de-stashing these for such a good price to be honest thank you um, so I'm really excited to add those to my knitting library so that's that and the other thing that I want to just quickly mention is um, I stopped into an op shop um, not that long ago that I hadn't been to before purely because I went out to brunch with a friend um, and we were sitting on a table outside and I could see an op shop just a couple of doors down and I love going into op shops whenever I um, can especially ones that I haven't been to before and I actually I found a few things from them one is this necklace which I think is just so beautiful and I am so happy with it I have um, been wanting to get like chunky beaded necklaces for a while so I was really happy to find this beauty there and I got that I got um, this tool here which I had I had never seen before. I don't exactly know how to use it, but it says it is a um, easy hem skirt marker. So it looks to me that you um, put it on the floor, on the ground, and then you can measure um, where the bottom of your skirt is so that you can make sure that it's going to be even all the way around so it is something that's going to have to need two people so i guess if you're the tailor you would be using this tool when you're fitting other people um, and i guess maybe if i'm sewing for myself 
and I ever wanted to use this, I'd need someone else to um, use this tool for me. But even if I don't ever use it, I think it's just such a neat tool, a neat little piece of sewing history. And it only cost a dollar, which is amazing. <laughs> such a steal. Um, I think it just looks cool. It's um, unique and interesting and I love it. So that is that. And then the third thing that I got is um, a cone of yarn. So this is it here. Sorry for the noise. All right, so this here, let's see if I can show you I don't know if you'll be able to see inside there, but it says Macquarie wool. So um, I don't know what NTL is, and I never thought to look it up. But yes, so it's it says it's that it's wool. I didn't want to blindly trust that, so I did do the burn test. But because I don't have a great sense of smell, um, I. I I struggled with that <laughs> even. Um, and I had to get my partner to come out because um, I was doing it outside. I had to my partner, my I had to ask my partner to come out and say um, what he thought that it smelled like. And um, happily, he thought it smelled like burning hair, which indicates um, a natural protein fiber. And but I still felt like I I couldn't tell. I watched a few videos and I still just couldn't decide like which exact category it fell into so I shared a reel on Instagram um, in the hopes that other people would be able to help me out and the general consensus is that it is actually wool and Sarah of the Taylor Made podcast did also mention that um, in her experience people don't generally rewind things onto cones because cone winders aren't as common as a ball winder or even just winding by hand. So if there is a label on it, which there was, they're usually pretty trustworthy. So um, I am just going to assume that this is 100% wool of some variety. And um, my only concern now with it is um, that moths or something has have gotten to it because you, like you can see here, there are some areas where you can see that Either something has eaten through it or it's just snapped. Um, there's another little like fluffy broken bit there. So I don't know if um, when I do start working this, I don't know if I do want to just rewind the whole thing um, and see how many, <laughs> how many little balls it ends up making or if I can get like a couple of bigger balls out of it which is of course the hope um, but yeah I think that's probably the smarter thing to do because there are a lot of little breakages there um, yeah I think that will be smarter than just trying to knit off the cone and hope that it all goes well so please excuse me again while I put this in plastic So it is just in a plastic bag because after I did the burn test, um, I chucked it in this bag and it has been sitting in the car um, in the hopes that it will cook and kill off anything that may still be living in here and eating it up because obviously I don't want to damage any of my other wool. So I will be popping that back in the car um, until I need it. <laughs> I guess because why not why not leave leave it in there for as long as possible um, I think I should stop there there was something else that I wanted to mention just on multi crafty things but I think I'll leave it for my next episode if I remember I should make a note of it today so that I don't so the very last thing that I wanted to finish off on as usual is a little heartful of craft and this past, 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 this past month, I am grateful for self-care rituals. So this year I have been trying to um, do, or 
Mm, 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 mm. Uh, I have been trying to develop some self care practices just for my own well being.、Um, so I have been trying to、uh, maintain a diary. I、um, have not been great at it. I definitely do not write in it every day. But、um, yeah, I'm trying. And I write in it a, a couple of times a week, maybe. And、um, I have found that since I have. Okay, so when I first started, I really wanted to be writing in it every single day. And I was good for a few days, and then I just stopped completely for a couple of weeks. And then、um, not that long ago, I realized that I shouldn't be trying to force it, and it's fine to just. Do it whenever I feel like it, and I actually found that I have been writing in it more since then.、Um, I guess, I guess,、um, not having the pressure to write on it in the back of my head has made me feel more like writing on it. <laughs> so, yeah, if any of you keep diaries and have any tips on how to.、Um, Turn that into a habit. I would love to know. Please let me know in the comments down below、um, because I would like to write in it more, but it's not a priority. So it's not a big deal if I don't, but it's, it, it'd be nice to do. The other thing that I have、um, tried are just things to sort of help me with like relaxation and reducing stress. So I As I have mentioned many times previously, I, I have a lot of issues with like muscle pain and things like that. So, mainly my arm, a lot lately in、um, my shoulders and lower back. And I do know for sure that when I am concentrating, I tend to tense up. And、um, everything that I have read or been told is that. It is sort of indicating that if you can just reduce stress overall, then in times when, like, like that, when you're just focusing on things,、um, then that sort of built up stress isn't going to come out、um, in those ways like it does for me, where I'm tensing up and causing myself pain. So I am trying things. Like、um, incense, I have these a couple of boxes of these here, and I like these ones because they're just little, so they're not going to burn for a, a really long time. They, they burn through really quickly, actually. And then it's also not as strong of a smell because I feel like,、um, like a proper length stick of incense would be too overpowering for me, especially. In、um, the size of my craft room at the moment. But I do also love that this incense is like a little matchstick. So you do actually strike that、um, on the box there, like a match, and、um, you just let it burn past the match head portion and then you blow it out and sit it on.、Um, so it actually comes with this little felt. This little felt pad there.、Um, so you just sit the stick of incense on that and let it let it do its thing. So that's one thing.、Um, I do also just put that back. I do also have、um, an electric diffuser and I have an essential oil that I put into that.、Uh, I probably use that more than anything else、um, because I do find. I, like, even that, I find, I find that incense is just really strong. So, maybe when I've gone through the couple of boxes of incense that I have,、um, I probably won't buy any more.、Um, but I do still, I still really like that one,、um, that brand. I think I just like the idea of it, though, more than the actual smell.、Um, it's not that it's a bad smell, it's just my personal taste. Anyway, so yeah, I have.、Um, An aroma diffuser that I use, and then I do also have I built up quite a collection of um, candles, um, but I keep telling myself, 
why haven't I burnt them? Why haven't I used them? I don't know why, but I feel like I would like them the best, so I should start giving them a go. I think for some reason I want to get through, I want to finish something off before I start using them, but I'm just going to start using them, I think. Maybe when I knit today, I'll light a candle and see how that goes, just to try to help me relax. And then I'm also trying to drink um, more like herbal teas, have less caffeine. Um, and the other thing that I've been wanting to do but haven't been great about doing is meditation. So I definitely, when I can't sleep at night, I, um, I, ha I listen to sleep guided meditation things to try to help me sleep and they work really, really well. But I would also like to meditate um, during the day to try to help me relax and just release whatever pent up stress I have. Um, yeah. But again, I have been really bad about that. So just um, the last couple of days, actually, I've realized that I should try pairing it. So now before I um, sit down to knit or before I start spinning or something like that, I will um, take five minutes to do some meditation before I let myself start crafting. Um, and that's, that seems to be working well for actually getting me to meditate I'm still terrible at it my mind just like wanders all the time but I know that it takes practice to um to improve <laughs> yeah so um self-care rituals I think they're fantastic I hope that you're finding time to um do them to do something um that is looking after your mental spiritual everything well-being as well and um, again I, I'd love to hear what you do and um, let me know you know if there are things that you have that you have done or are doing that you find are particularly helpful um, I think it would just be really lovely to share all of that with each other so Yes, that is all that I have to share with you today. Um, thank you. If you are still here, thank you for sticking around for such a long one today. I hope that you have enjoyed everything that I have had to share. And yeah, I, I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're finding time to look after yourselves and spend time with loved ones and spend time on your crafting or whatever it is that brings you joy. I will hopefully see you in about a month for the next episode. That's it. Fairly well.